Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and on today's DIY Wednesday video, we are going to solve the age old party problem of which drink is mine? Has this ever happened to you? Oh my God, Shannon, you made it. Let me get you a drink. Hold on. I'll be right there. Hey, Chief, can you come out here really quickly? I need your help with something. I'm coming. Let me just set my drink down. Sherry, hurry. Come out here. We need a fourth for Flipka. All right, I'm on my way. I'm coming. Oh my gosh. Okay, shoot. Where did I put my drink? Editor John, is it? Whose drink is this? I'm guessing this one's mine. Oh, who's using a solo cup as their juice bit cup? So, I know it may not seem like it, but 4th of July is just around the corner. You may be hosting a 4th of July party, or you may be going to a 4th of July party. And there is nothing worse than everybody having the same glass with different beverages in them. And you're all playing games, you're jumping in and out of the pool, you're lighting fireworks, you're setting your glass down here, there, everywhere, amongst everybody's. And when you go to take a drink, you have no idea which glass is yours. I know, I know, first world problems, I'm telling you what. But we are going to solve that today with the easiest, most cost effective, quickest DIY ever on the planet. And there's a special surprise kind of towards the end of this video. So let's get into it. What do we need? The first thing you're gonna need to do is go to your local Joann's, Michael's, wherever they sell Cricut vinyl. Now, don't get discouraged right away. I'm only telling you that we need Cricut vinyl. You actually don't need a Cricut at all. We're just gonna use the vinyl. And the vinyl we are using is the Cricut chalkboard vinyl. I know, this is chalkboard vinyl and it does say on the back that this is removable vinyl, which I was looking for permanent, but I didn't see any. If you can find permanent, I would get permanent. I'm just gonna have to be extra careful when washing these glasses that I don't peel off this. But I guess on the other plus side, if we mess up, we can easily take it off and start again. So, first thing you need, Cricut, chalkboard, vinyl. Second thing you need, glasses. Now, the reason why we are doing this video so far in advance of 4th of July is Dollar Tree has all of their 4th of July stuff out now. If you want to go get special 4th of July glasses, now's the time to do it. I got the most darling glasses from the Dollar Tree. I got two colors and these are glass. Mason jar with straw and the lid top. I like, especially at parties, glasses that have lids on top so like flies and shit don't go inside of them. So I got four in blue and I got four in red. And aren't these the cutest fucking things you've ever seen in your life? I did happen to get glass just because I thought they were super cute. But my intention was to get plastic glasses. I don't really like glass glasses outside at parties. You never know, drunk people. Dropping glasses, spilling drinks, glass everywhere. Knowing that, I did get glass. However, the Dollar Tree did have solid red glasses in plastic, solid blue, solid white, ones that almost look like um, reusable solo cups. So you could get any glass you want. Doesn't have to be these, it could be whatever. However, depending on the design that you're going to do with your chalkboard vinyl, if you wanna do a design where the design goes all the way around the glass, you're gonna wanna make sure you get a glass that is very symmetrical top to bottom. Any glass that tapers in like this, we're gonna have a very hard time wrapping that vinyl smoothly around the entire glass. But that doesn't mean you can't use a plastic glass that tapers. You'll have to do another design, like maybe cut out a circle or a rectangle or what have you to just pop it on the front. Now these are very symmetrical all the way around, so I'm hoping that I can do a band of chalkboard vinyl all the way around these without it getting lumpy and bumpy. But we'll see. 
If it doesn't work, we will alter our design to something that does work. It's that easy. So first things first, we need to prep our glassware. So you're going to want to get some rubbing alcohol and either a cotton pad, I just got a little microfiber towel. We are going to want to clean off the entire surface of our glass, plastic cup, whatever, and we want to use rubbing alcohol to do it. So just go through all of your glasses, you bought four, you bought eight, you bought 10, whatever. Get your rubbing alcohol and just clean off any of the oils, grime, what have you, because that is going to make your vinyl adhere better to your glass. Once you have all of your glasses cleaned off, we can start with the customization. Once you're done cleaning up your glasses, just go ahead and move them to the side. We don't need them right now. We are going to prepare our Cricut chalkboard vinyl. So you're gonna need scissors, a paper cutter, if you got one, a ruler, a blade, whatever. And then you wanna decide what shape, according to the glass or plastic cup that you purchased, what shape you are going to want to make. Now, like I said, I have this vision of a strip in the middle of the glass in the chalkboard vinyl. That may not work, but that's my plan. Now, this chalkboard vinyl I got at the Joanne. I wanna say it was pretty inexpensive as far as Cricut vinyl is concerned. So yeah, not as expensive as their other vinyls, which is nice. 12 inches by 48 inches. So it's 12 inches wide by 48 inches long. So we have plenty of vinyl for our eight glasses. I mean, if you make a rectangle that's like two inches, whatever that is, that's how many glasses you could make. Just saying, out of one $8 Cricut vinyl. Now, if you have a Cricut, you could get really fancy with your shape and you could Cricut it out some like this shape with like the point at the top, the round corners, you know, those sorts of shapes. You can totally do that. If you wanna bust out your Cricut, bust it out and cut your shapes out on your Cricut. But I don't feel like busting out my Cricut and I know a lot of you may not have a Cricut, so we're gonna take it real simple. I'm just gonna cut a tiny strip off of the top lengthwise. I'm doing a test run. I just wanna make sure it does reach all the way around. And it does with plenty of extra. Just be aware of that. You may have to cut your vinyl lengthwise in instead of width-wise if you wanna do a long strip around. But honestly, how cute. When this is the proper thickness, this is gonna be amazing. So now we just gotta decide, A, what our shape is, and B, how big our shape needs to be. I don't wanna cover up the glass too, too much, but I was kind of thinking two inches. So I am going to cut eight two-inch strips from this vinyl here, and I'm gonna do it on my paper cutter. So now that I jacked up my straight edge, I'm gonna need to make another straight edge. I'm gonna unwind that and let that fall to the floor. But if you don't have a paper cutter, just get your ruler, mark out your shapes, draw lines, cut it out with scissors. It's not that big of a deal. Nobody's gonna care. They're just gonna be super excited that they have their own personalized glass. So I'm gonna get my straight edge here, boom. And now I can cut every two inches very quickly and slice. Let's just see what we think about two inches. Oh yeah, I think two inches is cute. It gives people plenty of room to write their name. Should I do a one and a half test strip just to see what we like better? Let's try that. Okay, so this one's one and a half and this one's two. Ooh, ooh, do I like one and a half better? I think I'm gonna go one and a half. Now that we're looking at it side by side, two is just too thick to me. So I'm gonna trim this one down. That's what you need to do. Figure out your shape and cut out as many shapes as glasses that you have. Easy, I told you, easy. Okay, I just stopped myself mid-cutting. I got four out and then I thought, hey, dum-dum, what if when you try to wrap it around the glass, the shape of the glass, even though you think it's proportionate from top to bottom, what if it isn't? And what if you try to wrap it around and you get lumps and bumps and bubbles and it doesn't lay smooth? You better test one before you cut out all eight and waste your $8 Cricut vinyl. That's what I suggest you do as well. And then here's the part where I want my strips to be exactly in the same spot on every single glass because when I line them up on the counter before people arrive for the party, I want 
everything to look super uniform. I don't want one higher than the other. I'm gonna eyeball my first one and then use my first one to determine the placement of all my other glasses. But if placement doesn't bother you like it bothers me, you just put it on wherever you want. So I'm gonna take off just a little bit of the backing to reveal just a little bit of the stickiness. And now these glasses have like a seam on either side. So to make sure I'm straight, I'm going to line up my edge with this seam. I'm just gonna eyeball where I think it looks good. Press that down. Now I'm not gonna press super firmly right now in case I need to make adjustments. I just wanna make sure that my idea for this design lays properly. And I don't want it to aim down or up because I want my two ends to meet on the other side of the glass. Ooh, see, I'm not lined up. I'm down about like a centimeter. That's why I didn't want to press down firmly. I want to take this off lightly, lightly, readjusting. Ooh, closer. Okay, this might take me a minute, so hang on. Okay, so I got it. This design for this particular glass works beautifully. No lumps and bumps, everything laid smooth. It was just kind of a, you know, I'm just gonna trim away some of this. And I'm just making a little crease with my fingernail where I want to cut off my extra. And I'm gonna use a blade and my ruler to do that. Fingers crossed it works out. Ideally, what I would do, is I would take this off, get the length and then cut all of these, but I'm not gonna do that because what if, I don't know, it doesn't line up. I'd rather painstakingly cut to size at the end rather than pre-cut all the lengths and then have them not match up for whatever reason. My line's not straight when I trimmed it, what have you. Everybody cross your fingers. This goes as smoothly as it should in my head. Make sure my blade is straight. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, suke suke. That is Perfection! Yes! All right, now make sure everything is pressed down. We don't have any air bubbles around at all. And then look, done! So cute! Now we just have seven more to do. Oh my goodness gracious! Hmm, don't mind if I do. That is darling. Okay, let's hurry up and get the rest of our strips cut out and get them on these glasses. Here's my original that I'm going to use as my template for my remaining glasses. So, I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna eyeball. I know, I was like, I wanna be very precise about this. This may be a little trial and error, but that's okay. And just undo a little bit of my sticky back paper. The seam of the glass is right here, but I'm leaning it more towards my template glass so I can make sure that it's lined up. So now, gingerly peel as you go around your glass. Make sure you're lined up at this side, which we're not, so I have to adjust like I had to do the first time, yay. Wouldn't it be great if I just did it and it laid properly? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, this process, a little tedious, not gonna lie. If you wanted to do strips and then just cut them like three inches long, you'd have no problem. But it's fine, it's fine, we'll get it. So now that I have it lined up, I'm gonna try to create like my little cutting crease so I know exactly where to cut that off. Part of me too is like, you probably could make a crease, peel this back a little bit and snip it with scissors, but I don't trust my straight line cuts with the scissors, even if it's only an inch and a half wide. So very slowly, but very precisely make my cut. <gasps> my blade got away from me a little bit. That was not the best cut. No. Okay, I jacked this one up. I jacked this one up. I cut over my line and then I cut under my line and now I have a gap. I don't like that. I'm gonna redo it. I gotta figure out the best way to cut the trim edge. Gosh dang it all and I had it lined up so great. I mean, it was only like a millimeter of a gap but a gap nonetheless, and I'm not having a gap. I'm just not, so I'm gonna redo it. I got plenty of vinyl, we're fine. I did much better at laying this one down. It only took me two tries to get it lined up perfectly. So I'm back at my scene here. We're gonna try the scissor method and see if that works any easier slash better. I'm gonna peel it away. <sighs> and now I'm gonna cut 
as best I can on this little crease line I made. I'm nervous, more so than with the blade. <sighs> All right, let's see. Moment of truth. Ah, oh, that's good. Okay, that's the way you gotta do it. Fold it back, it lines up perfectly. I just need to rub in my edges so they're perfectly smooth and seamless. Woohoo! Look at this, now we got two. And they're perfectly aligned. I know, I know. You don't have to tell me, I already know. So now that we have our perfect method of application, all we have to do is finish up the rest of our glasses. So cute, right? Okay, yay, I am on my last glass and it didn't take very long at all, even with the lining up of everything. And let me just tell you, these glasses are pretty sturdy because I just picked up this one and I hit my counter and then it knocked over another glass and then this one flew out of my hand, hit my counter and dropped all the way to the floor and it didn't break. A <gasps> dollar twenty-five at the Dollar Tree, who knew? So let's get this last one on here. Yeah, I've really gotten the hang of it too, by the way. Perfect. Now while I'm trying to butt my edges up right close together, if I have a little bit of an overlap, it doesn't really bother me. I'd rather have a little tiny overlap than to see a little sliver of glass peeking through my seams. Boom. Ooh, that looks good. And now we press it into place. I take my towel and kind of Scrub it in, because I don't want those seams lifting. And voila! Yay, we're done! And just like that, in no time at all, and for very little money, we have the cutest personalized, reusable drinking glasses. I mean, how cute. Now, when you're at the Dollar Tree, picking up your reusable glasses, grab yourself some chalk because when you set up your drink station at your pate, you're gonna wanna have pieces of chalk out. Now, everybody can get their glass and write their name on it, their initials, a heart, a flower, whatever. So now we know this is my glass. And because I'm awesome, I'm gonna write that I'm awesome. It's my glass, I can personalize it however I want, and now, no one will accidentally pick up my drink thinking it is their drink. I know, it's genius, cheap, and cute. And once everybody's gone, you're cleaning up the party, just take a towel. You don't even have to really because you're gonna have to rinse out the glasses and wash them anyways. But look, da 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 da! Ready for the next party. Oh my gosh, Shannon, you made it! Let me get you a drink. Hey, Jakey, I need your help. Okay, I'll be right there. Jerry, hurry, come out here. We need a fourth for flip cup. All right, I'm on my way. I'll be right there. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, yes. Mmm, vodka lemonade. Thanks to these personalized custom drinking glasses, I never have to worry about picking up someone's chew spit cup at a party ever again. Okay, now that your amazing drink glasses are made, you might be asking yourself, self, I'm having this amazing party and I have all of these beautiful reusable drink glasses, but now what am I gonna serve at my party? Well, remember when I told you there was a surprise? Here comes the surprise. I am gonna show you how to make the easiest, most refreshing alcoholic or non-alcoholic punch that you can make ahead of time. So if you have one of these like spigoty type containers or a pitcher, whatever, that you can pour a bunch of liquid into and just sit out, you are good to go. Now, the story behind this drink goes back many, 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 many years. I went to a party at a friend's house and the hostess of the party had a pitcher of drinks out. And she said, it is so good. She told me it was limeade, vodka, and ginger ale, which kind of sounds like a Moscow mule. However, it's not made with ginger beer and because it's not made with ginger beer, you could do a non-alcoholic version as well. All you need is something to house some liquid. Then you're gonna need some ginger ale. Then you're gonna need some limeade. 
So I'm technically calling this like a limeade punch. It really doesn't have a name. You don't want to call it a Moscow Mule. So you can make up your own name for it. Vodka Lime Punch, whatever you want. Ginger Ale, Limeade, and some vodka. Oh, and I got some fresh limes to make it look, you know, really she-she. Really no recipe, no rhyme or reason. I prefer to use the frozen lime concentrate, but they didn't have any at the store when I went this morning. So I grabbed this, not a big deal. If I were gonna use frozen lime concentrate, I would take that can, dump it in here, then where it says like, three and a quarter or four cans full of water, I would use ginger ale instead of water. But for today's concoction, we're just gonna pour equal parts of limeade and ginger ale into our container, and then we're gonna pour in vodka to taste. It's really that easy. So get your limeade. Oh, I probably should shake well. I'm telling you, ugh. This drink could be dangerous because it is so refreshing and the limeade just has that right amount of like, huh, in your mouth that you hardly taste the vodka. So be careful. So pour in your limeade. I'll just pour in like half for now. And then pour in some ginger ale. Oh, 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 oh. We almost had a mess on our hands. You know, just eyeball it. It's not a science. I'll pour in half. That seems pretty good. Now, you can always like taste your concoction as you go. So get a little juice glass. Taste this puppy. Maybe it needs more ginger ale. Maybe it needs more limeade. So taste it before you put your vodka in. I don't know. It's kind of perfect as is. I'm going to put a little bit more limeade in it. I want it to be a little more limey. It's, it's heavy on the ginger ale right now. A little more limeade. Might as well do it. Let's just... There we go. Good, that should be good. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, that's nice. Now from here, you just put in vodka. So I'm more of a like half mixer, half vodka kind of gal, but you do you. If you like a little less vodka, put a little less vodka in. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. It's amazing. I haven't poured my vodka in yet, but Pour your vodka in. Then take your limes. Just do some lime circle-y, slicey situations to float on in there. Make it look super fancy. About four limes. Cut up as many as you want. Drop them on in. Super cute. Now this container is pretty cool because it has like a center thing that you fill with ice so it doesn't melt into the drink. See, fill it with ice, plop that in. Keeps your drink cold without making it watery. Once you have your vodka in here, boom, 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 you're good to go. Now, let's say this is our non-alcoholic version, cause it is, cause it doesn't have any vodka in it, and you wanna make an alcoholic version. So, you grab another little spigot container. Now, this spigot container happens to have like a chalkboard thing on it that I could label vodka limeade punch, but this one does not. But you already know we have the Cricut vinyl. So just cut out a cute rectangle, stick it right on the front of here, limeade punch mocktail, so that people know there is no vodka in this one. If you have pictures that do not have any sort of labeling, cut little strips of this, we've got a bunch of it. And now you can label all of your beverages on your bar so people know what has alcohol, what doesn't, what mixer is this, what mixer is that. It's all right here in this little $8.49 Cricut vinyl. I know, it's amazing, I know. And then, oh my God, look at how cute your party setup is. Line up all your reusable, personalized glasses with your drinks. Don't forget, put out a couple, three pieces of chalk next to the glasses so people can write their names on it. I mean, if this doesn't give you the crown of the hostess with the mostest, I don't know what will. Because seriously, seriously. So there you have it and there it is. For about 18 to 20 bucks, and that's including your Dollar Tree glassware, your chalk from the Dollar Tree, and your Cricut chalkboard vinyl, you can make the cutest personalized drinking glasses anybody's ever seen. And now, 
no one will get their drinks mixed up with anyone else's at your party. I know, I'm genius. I know this about myself. So, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which is every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out. Either high or low. <laughs>